Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you hear a little bit of noise in the background, it's my daughter, she's on her tablet. Also today, I will be talking to you guys about what happened with my daughter and I hope you guys enjoy. It is a long, long story and I will be doing my makeup throughout the video. So let's get to it. The story starts off with my accident. I was from 25 to 26 weeks when I had my car accident. My sister was driving, I was in the passenger seat, my friend, um, I don't want to say her name because what if she doesn't want to be named, but let's just keep her as friend. She was sitting behind my sister, my sister Nahi, she doesn't mind getting named. She was sitting behind my sister, so she was sitting in the behind the driver's seat. And then my cousin Janice, which I'm sure she don't mind being named either, she was sitting behind me. So we had just left my friend's house. Friend is the one that sitting behind my sister. We had just left her house. Um, we were getting ready. And yes, I was pregnant. And I was heading out to go to the club, I believe. I regret a lot of my decisions and I learned from my mistakes. So don't go at me in the comments. We're on this back road and we're on our way to a gas station to get some gas. On our way to the gas station, we pass a little road that you can take a right into. And on that road, it was dark. It was around 1030. On that road, there was a car or truck i'm not sure i wasn't sure at the moment waiting for us to pass i guess so he could take a right but he had been waiting since we were coming from way back and i was like okay maybe it's a cop and he's just trying to check the speed of the people driving by because it's a back road so a lot of people are like you know what whatever let me just go fast because you know you wouldn't think there was cops there I tell my sister, my sister, the speed limit was 45. My sister was going fast. So I told my sister, slow down. I think that's a cop, like checking speed limits. Like you're going to get a ticket. Because I had already got a ticket the year before. And my dad was mad. And I was like, dude, slow down. Because if you get a ticket, my dad's going to be pissed. So she turns around. She turns around while driving. She turns around to check if it was a cop. If the, if the cop went behind her. She just turns around quick. While she's turning around, my cousin and my friend said, Jackie, put your seatbelt on. What if it's a cop? Or I don't know if they said if it's a cop. Or, I don't know. But they said something about along the lines, put your seatbelt on. And I said, um, hold on a second. I'm texting bleep back. In that split second when I said that and my sister turned around, my sister, the night before it had rained, so my sister swerved a little bit and there was like that, I don't know what kind of sand it was or dirt it was, but it was like, I don't know, it was wet. So she swerved a little bit to the edge of the road. She hit, like she hit the little sand, didn't hit it, but you know what I mean? Like she hit the little sand on the edge of the road. And so the the she lost control of the car. And so she tried to step on the brakes to gain control, but little did she know that was going to make it worse. So we were going, let's say we were going straight towards you guys. And we're going like this. She hits like this. When she hits the brakes and she loses control, the car goes and it goes in this way towards me. So it makes it seem like we were going this way. And I was just like... So now we're going this way. When we're going this way, we the car swings that way. Remember, I'm on the passenger seat, so I'm on this side. So the car is now going this way. As soon as it turns this way, it swings against. There's a guardrail on both sides because there was like a little pondish area on the bottom. The car swings against the guardrail into my seat. I fly on top of my sister. Remember, I didn't have time to put my seatbelt on, which the seatbelt, no seatbelt. In this case, um, please put your seatbelt on. But in this case, it saved 
my life. We were only driving where we had an accident was not even five minutes away from my friend's house. We had just left when we had the accident. So just imagine that. We hit the guardrail. It goes into my seat. I fly over on the in between the two seats on that little middle part, like almost over my sister. And the that's when I black out. That's when the car starts flipping in the air. And boom, we land. Thank God we land not upside down, but we land with the tires down in the little pondish area. I wake up and I wake up to screaming. Um, saying, I wake up to somebody screaming, saying, get out, get out. The, the car is sinking. The car is sinking. And I was like, I was so confused because when my sister swerved, me and my friends thought she was just joking. Like, you know, like we were like, ah, you know, like, so then my friend gets out. Um, she was scared because the back door was jammed. But I, I'm not sure if she got out through the window or if she got out through my cousin's door. Point is, my friend gets out and she gets on the top of the car and I'm still in there. And so the front of the glass is broken and I just feel the water going to here when I'm waking up. And they're just like, I just hear, mainly my friend is who I hear screaming, get out, Jackie, get out. The car is sinking and like, Oh my God, it gives me chills to even think about it. And it tears my eyes up. Like it was so like, if you think about it and you can see it like and feel like I can still remember what it felt like being in there. And I was just like, what? Like you just wake up and you're, you're just blacked out and you wake up and you're in the water and you're um, 25, 26 weeks pregnant. And I remember hearing my sister like, I'm sorry, like, because she kept telling me I'm sorry. And I was like, you're sorry for what? And she was like, you're pregnant like your baby, like your baby could have died. Like, we don't know if your baby's okay. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Like, she kept saying sorry to me because she felt bad because I was pregnant. And I was like, don't be like, everything's going to be fine. And I just get out. And I was just like, I wasn't even like crying. Like, I was just trying to like, I was like in... My adrenaline was rushed, but I was just like, let me not think about me. My cousin has a gash right here, all right here, from the accident where she was behind me, behind the passenger. So we had the biggest impact against the guardrail. So the guardrail gashed her right here. And so I saw her and I take my maternity shirt off and I, I'm not thinking about myself at this moment. We're out, we're on top of the car, we're in the water. And I'm putting the my shirt around her head because I'm like, she's like, what is that? Is that water? And I said, no, that's blood. And so Janice was just like, what? Like, she was so confused. Her adrenaline was rushing too. Like, she couldn't feel the pain. So thank God. And it makes me want to cry again. And I said I wasn't going to cry in this video. The guy that I thought was a cop was a I, I don't i'm not sure what they called him i think they said a fire marshal i don't know but he had something to do with the fire department in the town that we had the car accident so luckily thank god he called um his people the firefighters and stuff and the ambulance and the police officers so they knew our exact location right away and i remember when i was standing there and we were waiting for the ambulance to get there it felt like forever forever and i remember this girl that i i didn't know her well but i knew her kind of like i had seen her and i had said hey to her because one of my really 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 fr um dear friends um i would just say her name i think she's cool <laughs> one of my dear friends katia um it was her cousin and I had met her at her 15th party. Katia had took me to her cousin's 15th. And this girl, I did not know at the time, lived right there by where we had the accident. And she comes with her dad rushing because they heard everything. And she's just looking at me. Oh my God, I'm going to get emotional again. 
So her eyes, there was so much sadness in her eyes when she looked at us. Like, she just looked at us like, I'm so, like, it wasn't her fault. But you could just, you could just see it in her face. Like, she just wanted to say, like, I'm so sorry this happened to you. Like, are you okay? She didn't recognize me right away. And then she finally recognizes me and she looks at me because the car is like, another car gets there and they're putting their lights towards me. And she's like... Jackie like this is to what I remember I think this is how it went right and she was like Jackie is that you are you okay like and I was like yes yes can you just call Katia like we need to call somebody because somebody needs to get in contact with my parents because my phone I don't even know where it's at like my phone was in my hand and then we're in the accident first of all you're not even thinking about your phone you're drowning so like I was just like, I don't even know where my phone is. Like, I just told her, I was like, hey, can you call Katia and tell her to call to call my cousin so my cousin can tell my parents because they're at a party together, blah, blah, blah. And my, thank God my parents were at a party, like, in the same town that we had an accident. I didn't even know they were at that party till, like, I knew they were at a party with my cousin, but I didn't know that's where they were. Like, I thought they were a little bit further. And... But thank God they were there. That she said she was going to call my friend. And then I remember everybody gets there then. Like the ambulance and all that gets there. Let me just explain this to you guys. How do I explain it? Okay. This is... <laughs> this is where I am right here in the water. This is the road. We have to climb all the way up through some rocks. Like, it wasn't even rocks. I believe it was, like, the same, whatever they used, to, the asphalt for the road. It, like, I guess it, like, poured down a little bit. And we had to climb on that. Of course, I'm last because I'm selfless and I'm putting everybody before me. Not forgetting that I'm pregnant, but I'm just, first, the first person we let up was my friend because she was freaking out because she was scared of water. So we let her out. Thank God nothing happened to her, nothing major. Like, she didn't even have to stay overnight in the hospital, I don't think. So she goes up first. And then my sister goes and pushes her up because they're, like, pushing her up. Then I let my cousin go because, like I said, my cousin had that gash. And as soon, I remember as soon as she goes up, she starts fainting. And they're trying to wake her up because she's losing blood because she has a gash on her head, which is serious. Me going up. And I remember... I didn't feel no pain. And as soon as I get out of that water and I get on that road, y me pega ese aire. Because y'all know that the mamas be like, cuando te pega el aire, es malo, es malo. Me pego el aire. And when I tell you my hip was killing me to the point where I couldn't walk. And so they thought I had got my hip fractured or something. Because it was hurting so dang bad. And... Thank God it wasn't in any of that. But shortly after the ambulance got there and they got me in the car, my parents get there right before we're about to leave. And they're going to take me to, they're going to take me to the nearest hospital. Well, they weren't going to take me to the nearest. They were going to take me to the hospital at the capital of Raleigh. Well, they were going to take me to Raleigh. And so it was like about a 45 minute drive. And it felt like it took forever that was the longest drive besides the other one i'm gonna tell you about a little bit later because unfortunately it has not been my first time on an ambulance i've been on an ambulance way too many times <laughs> they're getting the nicu ready because they're thinking that i'm not okay but thank god i'm not having no contractions right so we get to the hospital and I'm going to insert a picture here of how I looked when I got to the hospital. I remember being in the emergency room and the lady telling me like that they had to do an x-ray. And I was like, but no, like x-rays are so bad. Like, aren't they so bad when you're pregnant? Like, aren't Rick's? Aren't x-rays not supposed to be good for you while pregnant? Like, I'm not trying to do any damage to my kid. Like, 
I don't care if I'm not okay. Like, just make sure my daughter's okay. And I remember crying about it because they kept telling me they had to do it. And I was just like, no, I don't want to have an x-ray. And they wanted to do an x-ray because it, they said if I was okay, I had, they had to make sure I was okay first for, to make sure that she was okay. So that I, so that nothing could happen to me. So I was just like, okay, let's just do it. And I went to go get the x-ray. Then I was moved into an actual room after they told me that my hip was not broken. Thank God. But I still couldn't walk because I got really, really hurt. I couldn't. I couldn't walk. Let me just tell you, this water was swampy. Swampy water. So we stank. Like, we were stanky. And I could not shower for like three days. So, mm-mm. Anyways, like, ugh, I don't even, I don't even want to talk about how we smelled. I'm using this palette, which is old. So then the ultrasound tech comes in and they're doing like this hour long ultrasound. While I'm, keep in mind, I'm already hooked up to the monitors and all that for like, you know, the ones they hook you up to when you're pregnant. <laughs> to the heartbeat and all that, the contraction and I was having contractions and they were trying to stop them. And they kept telling me, you're going into labor. No, you're not. We're going to stop them. And I remember they gave me like a shot. Like they told me I couldn't eat. And they gave me like a shot of, um, look, I don't want to say something that wasn't, but it was like going to help Cassandra's lungs and all that grow faster. <laughs> And be ready so she could be stable when she was born or something like that. Like if she was happened to be born at the 25 weeks, 26 weeks that I was. So I was just like, okay, I couldn't eat or nothing. And her heartbeat kept dropping and they didn't understand why. So then, like I said, the ultrasound tech finally came. And keep in mind, I don't know what I'm doing with my eyeshadow. So I want to hear it. It's like... I go from finally thinking I'm okay, and then I get bad news again. And they tell me, well, you have a placental abruption. And I'm like, what? And it was 13 centimeters long? What does that mean? You know, like, I have no idea what that is. Well, how did that happen? And they're like, well, it must have been in your car accident at some point during the accident your placenta got a cut so what are we supposed to do from now like and they just told me well at the moment she weighs a pound 13 ounces and four weeks when you're 30 weeks if she hasn't grown at all then we're going to have to induce your labor at 30 weeks. That's if she doesn't come sooner. I was like, oh, okay. And so they they had already calmed down my contractions and all that. I did go home on like, I believe it was like a Monday. They sent me home because her heartbeat wasn't dropping anymore. Not as much. And they said I was doing okay. So they sent me home on a Monday and they were like, oh, you'll be fine. Just stay on bed rest or whatever. So I'm on bed rest. And then that Saturday after, like the week, the Saturday after I had had the accident, I'm back in the hospital again. So we go to this other hospital and at the other hospital, they're like, um, they're like, yeah, you're having minor contractions, but it's something we can control. Yeah. Her heartbeat kept dropping. And I was just like, like, are you serious? Like, when are we going to go home? Because, pobrecita, me estaban, me estaban starving. Like, because they kept putting that shot that I told you all about every time that they thought I was going to go maybe into labor. And it was like, like, almost every day. And I remember, like, when I got the shot, I couldn't eat for, like, six hours or 12 hours. I don't remember. It was something like that. And I was just like, are you serious? Like, y'all are starving me. Like, and I, they felt so bad because all I could eat was, like, water. And then, like, after I would tell them, like, all I could drink was water. And after I would tell them, like, I'm so hungry. Like, I was pregnant. 
and they were like, I'm sorry, but if you have this baby, like, you're not supposed to eat. And I was just like, oh my God, like, are you serious? Well, we'll give you a jello because that's not too bad. And I was just like, a jello man. <laughs> I got a baby inside of me. After that, I was literally in the hospital for like two more weeks. Like I was tired of being in the hospital. I didn't have a maternity shoe. I was just, I couldn't do it no more. Like I was so tired of it. I just wanted to go home. And every Monday and Friday at the hospital, I was having appointments, stress tests and all that, that ultrasound of you girls that have had high risk. Cause after the accident, I was considered high risk. So I would have to go do the high risk ultrasounds that took like an hour and all that and check her weight. And all that done every Monday and Friday at the hospital. And they would have like little events and stuff like that. We would go here, we would go there. My grandparents would go visit me. My cousins and everybody was just going to go visit me, like trying to get me on board because I was just so bored. I was just tired. I was in the hospital and I was on bed rest. Like I couldn't really do much all day. All day. I had these compressions on my legs and it was just a lot. I went through a lot while being in the hospital and it was just so sad. Fast track to the Saturday before Cassandra was born. I was discharged from the hospital on August 26th on Friday. After having my appointment and everything looked to be going well. And I had an appointment on Monday. So I'm so happy. I finally go home. And then Saturday is good. Sunday is good. I'm on my walker because your girl can't walk without a walker. The morning I go to my appointment. It was an 8 a.m. appointment. We went shopping. We went to eat. Then we came home. And I was feeling so bad. Like, I guess I was... I just said to myself, well, I'm so tired because I have not been walking like that. I have not been going out shopping and all that. And I was walking with my walker, but I feel like I was walking a lot. And I was like, maybe it's just that. Like, I just got tired. Right? And me trying to tell myself, like, it's just that. It's just that. And then I keep feeling bad. We got home maybe, like, 2 o'clock. And I was just feeling so bad. Like, I just, it felt like period cramps, but worse. But, you know, they were like eight minutes apart. I remember counting them because, you know, the doctor had already told me to watch out for contractions. So, we're watching out for contractions. And then I check and her heartbeat. Like, I still hear her heartbeat, so it's fine. But she had not been moving that much that day, so I was a little bit worried. I'm going to take a shower because every time I take a shower, she starts moving a little bit. So, I take a shower. And I still feel bad and my back is hurting so bad. And legit, that was like one of the first showers that I had taken by myself. Like I wasn't taking much showers by myself at the moment. But that day, like I just wanted to, like I was able to take showers by myself. It was just really difficult because I would get tired so quickly because, you know, my hip. So I just took like a quick shower and I was... I like I remember I took a quick shower and then the rest of the shower like I was just standing there you know like letting the water hit me on my back mainly and I was just like okay I'm a little bit relaxed I feel a little bit better but not much so and the contractions were getting worse so then I'm just like what's going on and so I remember laying down I was like I'm just gonna try to lay down a little bit see if I feel better so my contractions start getting worse and I'm just like what's going on like and I remember praying and being like, you know, if she's going to be born, make her be born today. Like, just let me get it over with. Like, I've been through so much. I've been through so much pain. Like, yeah, they're going to need. Si va a venir, que sea hoy. Like, let her come today. And let me just tell you, that day, God listened to me, girl. Like, he won't play and he listened to me. And I remember the contractions just got worse. And it was like around, I don't know, 8 o'clock. <sighs> and they just got worse. And, or like 7. I don't, can't remember, to be honest. <laughs> and my grandma was staying with us from Mexico because she was helping my mom out with me. And I remember going into my mom's bed. 
and just grabbing my stomach and I was just like, it hurts so bad. Like it hurts so bad. Pues que tienes, like que tienes. I was like, I don't know, it just hurts, it just hurts. Like it hurts like every like five minutes. Like they were getting closer. And I was like, it just hurts so much. My grandma comes in the room and she's like, <laughs> cause you know, if your grandma talks to you like this, like, you know, she's your grandma. She was just like, como eres pendeja? Like, you're in labor, blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, well, like, you know, how am I supposed to know? Like, yeah, I know the signs of labor, but I didn't think I would be in labor at 29 and a half weeks or 29 weeks, whatever it was. Yeah, because I was going to be 30 weeks that Friday and it was Monday. And I was like, well, I didn't think I would be, you know, having a baby right now. Like, the doctor told us everything was fine this morning. Vamos a llevarte al hospital. So... She called my sister and she was like, empaca sus cosas porque, you know, she's on the walker and she can't, you know, pack her stuff. So my sister started just packing a few stuff because we didn't think anything of it. Um, We were like, what well, in case we stay? Like we packed an extra bag in case we stay. We didn't even take that bag down because me and mom thought it wasn't nothing serious. And so then I, on my way to go with my sister to pack the bags, está el baño. And I remember passing the bathroom like barely passing it and I was like oh my god what is that like I felt wet and I was like what is that guess what it was not my water it was blood I was bleeding so my sister gets on the phone and calls 911 and they were like well she's bleeding and they're like well she can make it to the hospital my sister proceeds to explain that I'm only 29 and a half weeks pregnant that I had an accident and the doctor told him that if I started bleeding or anything like that or my water broke, like, I need to be rushed to the hospital ASAP. So then they're talking about, let me just send you to the nearest hospital to you. And I was like, no, 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 no. Because if y'all know where I live, the nearest hospital to me, and a lot of you guys know what the nearest hospital to me is because I was born in a hospital. No. No. Not for a preemie baby. They're not ready. The paramedics are the ones who decided they want to drive you all the way over there or not. So I was <laughs> they best. So then they they get here and they were like, no, like we're just gonna take you here. And then I was I explained to them everything again, this time to the paramedics. And they were like, Okay, yes, like we'll take you all the way over there. So we finally get to the hospital and I'm in there waiting for my mom to get there. My mom arrives into where I'm at. Finally, then this is where it gets like a big turn. They start putting me on IVs. They check me, I'm only two centimeters and a half dilated. So I'm two centimeters and a half dilated and they're giving me the IV so that I can be like induced and start. Um, see, I don't know nothing about that because I didn't have a regular birth i had a c-section they're they're giving me all the medication so that i can I, I can start opening up i don't know what it's called like i said and they're doing the iv or whatever then the ultrasound tech comes in and they're like this friday you were supposed to get the ultrasound where they check her weight to see if you were going to be induced so since it's seeming that we can't stop these contractions we're gonna have to like because your contractions are getting closer and you're not opening fast enough. We're giving you the medication. She's like, we're going to have to um, look at her. Like, we have time right now. So, we're going to look at her. And go ahead and do that ultrasound where we see how much she weighs. And she says, ma'am, you're having a baby tonight. I'm like, why? She's like, she's like, your daughter is already upside down. Like, you know, ready <laughs> and i'm just like what like and she's like yeah like your daughter's ready to come out and i was like okay so then i'm hooked up on the monitors and i'm doing fine and they're inducing my labor and then her heartbeat stops dro starts dropping and at that point i get the news and they're like, Your, her heartbeat keeps dropping. We're going to have to do a C-section. And I was like, a C-section? Like, no, 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 no. Like, I don't want a C-section. Like, and my mom was telling me no, too. And I was like, no, like, it's a longer recovery. Like, I don't I don't want to do that. I, 
I had already thought it all out that I was gonna have this baby, I'm gonna go on natural, I'm not gonna do no pain medication. Because even when I was in the hospital, when I first had the car accident, the pain was so severe for my hip. And they were giving me some strong, they were giving me um some, I don't even know what it's called. I don't even, I don't even want to say it because I don't even know what it's called. I'm just sound dumb. But they were giving me some strong medication. And I told them, they said that it's like clinic and poo that it won't affect your baby. But I was like, no, no. But there's like risk so i was like no i'll just aguantarme el dolor so i was like no like i was already ready like i was like si me puedo aguantar eso like i know pain i know birth is gonna be harder but me voy a aguantar like i'm just not gonna do it like i wasn't gonna do it uh, i know this is a little white like i said i had to make some i got this one at sephora i got the wrong shade and i love the foundation but i got the wrong shade and i love the formula so i gotta use it then her heartbeat keeps dropping again and again and again. And they said, you can proceed and not have a C-section. Or, but you're risking that your daughter will not make it out. Like, alive. Because her heart is stressing too much and labor is too stressful on her heart. Are you serious? Like, but she's like, you know, I still give you the choice. And I was like, can I just wait a little bit? Can I just wait? Make sure that her heart. So they said, as long as her heart doesn't, her heartbeat doesn't drop in 30 minutes. Like, we're going to give you 30 minutes. If her heartbeat doesn't drop in those 30 minutes, you're good. You can go ahead and have regular labor. When I tell you this girl, it was already like, 10 30 and when i tell you that this girl um decided to not her heartbeat did not drop the whole entire time to like three minutes before as soon as the heartbeat dropped the nurse walked in there and she was like no like you have to you have to go with the um c-section like you don't have no choice at this point you have to do the c-section and i was just like Okay, so when are we scheduling the C-section for, you know? She's like, you're doing it right now. Like, as soon as you sign the paperwork, you're going in right now. Like, this is an emergency C-section. Like, she needs to get out now. And I was just in shock, like, oh my gosh. And I remember the doctor was like, you're not scared? And I was like, no. I'm like, why would I be scared? Um, so then, as soon as I signed the paperwork... They're telling me everything quickly. They're like, who's going in there with you? And I was like, well, my mom, I mean, her dad wasn't there. Her dad, I don't even remember where he was working. And um, I was like, well, her, her, my mom is going in there with me. She's the only one here with me right now. And I mean, my dad was in the waiting room, but there was only one person allowed back there with me in the first place where I was at. I was like in labor and delivery, but I wasn't in the actual room yet. I was like in one of those little rooms where they take you when you go into labor and delivery from the emergency room and then they take you into labor and delivery when you know when they know you're actually gonna give birth and all that well at least at that hospital that's how it works because the hospital's big we're going back but first my mom had to wait where she was at because they were putting in the you know the thing they put in your back when you have a c-section and they did that that hurt a little bit then i started numbing and all that and then the surgery started and i remember i started vomiting because i had ate because you're not supposed to eat like before you have a c-section i remember like just going in there and i remember started vomiting and then as soon as i started vomiting like right after they're like she's here there was so many nurses in there and so much stuff in there and I remember they were just like, she's here. And I remember the first thing I did because they just showed her to me. And But as soon as they said she's here, I remember I remember laying like this. And the clock was back here. And I remember looking up like this. And it was 11.53 at night. And I was just like, God, you did that. Earlier that day, I had prayed to God, que si va a venir, que venga hoy. It was 11.53, seven minutes before the next day. 
Like, he made that happen. And he, like, he showed me his power that day. And I was so thankful. And literally, they just went like this. Y me la quitaron. Like, I couldn't touch her. Nothing, nothing. Nomás me la quitaron. And it was so sad. I remember they were just wiping her. And she started crying. And they took her away. I remember, like, two hours later, finally, like, at, it was, like, 2.30 something. Um, I finally... I was finally able to see a picture of her. Like, and my mom was like, because my mom took the picture, my mom was like, Cuando la veas, like, ni lo, ni lo vas a creer, like, está tan chiquita. I didn't get to see her till like the next day, till she was a day old. I gotta take pictures, which I'll insert a picture here. Of her when she was a day old, but you will not believe it. Her diaper was smaller than a license. Y le quedaba grande. And it was so crazy. That's the story of how Cassandra was born. And I'm not done with my makeup. So I'm just going to keep talking a little bit about everything else that happened with her. Just explain to you guys a little bit how she, how she did. So when she was first in the hospital... She had on the little, I'll insert a picture here if I find it. She had jaundice. She had jaundice and so she was wearing those little glasses because she had the little light on. And she had a little mask on, which I'll show y'all right now. She had like a little mask on too, which she finally got taken off later on. First few days, I I was able to hold her, just me, and I did the, you know, the little kangaroo. She is now about to be three. Can you believe it? And she wears a size four or five. She's so tall. I can't even believe it. And she talks a lot. She's had therapy, and the therapist said she's way above. So, she is a miracle, and I'm so thankful. Hope you guys enjoyed my video. I know I stretched it out a lot, and it was a long story, and there was a lot to be said. And I just hope you guys are careful out there driving um you you don't speed and you pay attention to the road everything happens for a reason and i just thank god because that accident made me realize so much in my life being in the position that i am right now and what i've gone through in the past two months i've looked so much back at that accident and realized that I forgot that God was teaching me that certain people weren't worth it. That that with that accident, I saw all the people that weren't there for me when they should have been there for me the whole time. I saw people who put other people first before me and that's not right. And I just thank God because now I'm in a position where I'm able to see the mistakes that I've made. And I can't blame no one but myself for allowing myself to stay and put up with stuff that I shouldn't have. And people that shouldn't have been in my life and shouldn't have been able, shouldn't have been able to have me in their life because I'm too good. I'm not saying I'm too good of a person. There's just certain people that don't deserve me. And so that accident helped me realize a lot now that i look back on it so i just want to thank you guys so much for watching and i hope you guys enjoyed and come back and check out my channel so please check out my latest video which is a q a video i'm also going to be posting a vlog soon i haven't finished editing it but this one is for sure going up first because like i said i told y'all this video was going to be up on monday so i'm going to post it so happy monday everybody do not forget to like comment and subscribe to my channel, turn on that notification bell. I said this is my preemie.
Did you like it? You like the channel? Comment, like, subscribe. I cute. <laughs> you cute, mommy? Ow. Are you cute? Yes. Oh. <sighs> Show your hair. Show your ponytail. Wow, so pretty. Hee <laughs> hee.